And hello everyone, we are still here with week 3 day 2 coverage of the Tencent LPL Summer. We're almost through the day 2 coverage here with Energy Pacemaker Hong Kong. Going to go up against Young Glory here. My name of course is Pastry Time and I'm joined by Papa Smithy. Papa, seen some established teams here, some great games here to start day 2. Maybe some newer teams here in this one, but still I think going to be a great game. Yeah, this is a repeat of the TJ Summer Promotion Series. This was the final. Both teams that hit the final were going to go through to the Tencent LPL Summer Split. But it was a 2-0 win for YG, formerly the uh, second team of Invictus Gaming. And you'll see the first ban from here is Zyra. I can tell you that's because the first time these two teams met in this uh, split of the summer series of the LPL, uh, Zyra mid was the blind pick from Wangori and really carried the Zyra mid pick. So they don't want to see Zyra this time. Nope, so no Zyra, no Lee Sin, and no Zack there. The three bans there from EP. YG going to go ahead and ban out Cannon Thrush and Twisted Fate. Going to get some respect in there as well. And interestingly enough, even though Rise is open, Elise is going to be the first pick up here from EP. And that means Young Glory pretty much snapping up that Rise as soon as possible. So, I mean, a 66% win rate. I mean, Elise, even when Cannon and Jace and Rise even also were the really big picks um, on the OGN side, you still would see the Elise first pick just because she's so flexible. She can go in so many different roles and she's so strong, you know, on this 3.9 patch. She is uh, definitely the strongest champion in the game, I'd have to say, now that Jace can't... Uh, smash up that mirror mana in 18 minutes she's strong and she's first picked just saw the stats flash there for rise as well a big win right here as well for him we so we've seen it patient time even though we only started the casting with this week three rise has been supreme so far he really has it almost surprised me you know at least i definitely agree a very strong pick but rise has been the story so far as far as i'm concerned so that is going to go over to yg here and, and look at this. I mean, the Zyra pick was exciting, but the Cassiopeia is picked here as well. That is Cassiopeia, isn't it? I was I was wondering there. The but... Chinese art is a little bit ambiguous, but that is certainly Cassiopeia. And we, funnily enough, mentioned Cassiopeia already in today's coverage, but uh, it was in a different situation. We were talking about Yorick Cassiopeia, one of kind of the classic combos with Yorick. No Yorick in sight just yet, but it has been a while since we've seen Cass, and... I mean, the reason she kind of dropped off is because despite um, how amazing her damage output is, she kind of is a little bit gankable. So, interesting to see her picked very aggressively here in this draft. She's such a wonky champion, Pastry Sam. And that sounds like I'm being pejorative, but she's just... Like, she does so much damage, right? We've all had, you know, been hit by a cube, been hit by poison. And, you know, the, the Twin Fang spam, the E spam, just wrecks you. She does so much damage. And her ult is so situationally amazing. If the enemy team is engaged in the counter-engage of her ultimate, the Petrifying Gaze is massive, but if things don't go ideally for her, like if she misses her poison and or her ultimate needs to be used offensively and gets flashed away or people are smart in terms of juking it, she just goes from being scarily effective, having the most single target DPS in the game, being able to wreck team fights into kind of just suffering a little bit. So it's super interesting. And this is even more interesting. I was actually going to mention... I Harry. might be incorrect, Patreon. It might not actually be Cassiopeia. I, I might have to like be trolling. It might Kale? be Shyvana. Ah... I think that's what it is. I, I, we'll find out soon. That's all good. But uh, Well, I mean, Jungle Cast would be something. But it, I'm going to guess it's probably Shyvana. Uh, we'll have to see. And, and yes, okay. here we go. There we go. It is Shyvana. That's... That's unfortunate. So, I mean, at least the viewers now know something about Cassiopeia, right? <laughs> yes, sure. I mean, hey, we, I'd love to see some Cassiopeia. If we ever see Cassiopeia in the LPL, I'll, that I'll is personally That's hopefully the first and last time that we're trolled by uh, the Chinese art. But, yeah. So, uh, definitely, definitely a step away from our Oceanic client. Yes, a little different here. But, hey, things looking good here in China. Action has really heated up in this week here. And we'll see if EPHK can get it done here against Young Glory. Both teams, I believe, have not done too well in this uh, current summer split. No, I mean, Young Glory's victory over EPHK on the first day of play. Their only v victory so far. And, of course, we've talked about how EPHK have toiled away with no victories. So much needed wins coming on the board for one of these teams. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, kind of both teams towards the bottom definitely like to pick up a win at least against the other. Young Glory last time couldn't, uh, sorry, got it done. And EPHK, of course, looking for their first win here. And it's always good to get one. It really, things really do change once that moment. And it's super, shifts. I mean, it's just not just for pride though, Pastry Time, because the, the structure of the LPL is that six teams go through to the next split, two teams get demoted. And now we've just seen LMQ open up a lead at sixth place, you know, now with three wins on the board. So YG wants to get two to start squaring that ledger, and EPHK just want to get on the board. Yep, Dom Hawks here. Going to get spotted out there. A little bit of damage coming through there as Dragon going to pop in with a 
couple of auto attacks, but you know, YG just moving through here, kind of testing the waters. We'll see a lot of early movement from teams, just generally at level 1, but not a whole lot of invades. But really what's just going on is that teams are just trying to find a foothold, figure out where the wards are, figure out what entrances people are hiding, maybe where certain champions are, because you can sniff out a lane swap if people are standing in certain spots. So, you know, just kind of scouting for vision and making sure that everything sets up okay. And Shabana definitely someone who benefits from a lot of early vision in the jungle. The interesting thing to me is that, you know, if you watch the OGN, you see a lot of double wardings on one side of the brush, uh, one side of the enemy jungle, sorry. You know, you see a lot of aggressive invades, not to steal a buff, but to have exclusive vision about a side of the jungle, just so that they have, you know, con consistent vision of the enemy jungler for that first four minutes or so. We don't see that here. We don't have buff wards down at all. It just seems to be entrances that they're worried about. So buffs now started as well. Couple seconds into those ones there. Red buff gonna be up here for Shivana. Almost finishes that one there very quickly there. That one's gonna go down. Oh, there we are. Turns around, picks that one up. And Ali's gonna start on the blue there as well. Over on the other side. So kind of kind of a story of two very different junglers in my opinion. You know, we've got, you know, the classic very fast I clear everything very quickly and find the jungle Shivana, and then a very aggressive gank oriented Elise here. And that's why the rise pick is so interesting to me in a 1v1 situation because Ryze traditionally is picked with a jungler like Lee Sin just so that you have that option to you know have a level 3 gank Ryze at level 2 you know he has that instant stun he's very good to gank for but in a long lane which in this case is the bottom lane very gankable champion and Shyvana doesn't really excel in skirmish without uh, you know without you know turret dives or damage already being done to the people in the skirmish so Rise might struggle here. Very, very gankable. Yeah, I mean, I think the matchup right now, especially early on against Shen, is pretty happy. But you're right in that Elise can really get something done. In fact, even wandering down now is Laupi. Maybe going to uh, And that, of course, is why we see the double ward coming out from Young Glory at level 1, is to maybe relieve some of the pressure from this Rise, because yeah. he's not going to have Shyvana to equalize the jungle pressure. No? I mean, I'm trying to think, actually. Shyvana got changed fairly recently. Is that in effect on this patch? I almost assume it must be. I believe the new, the way her E works and everything, I believe that is true, so... I mean, she d probably would be doing deceptively large team fight damage now. Not that she didn't do that before, but of course she doesn't have, you know, the, the ganking pressure of most junglers. Yeah, her new E is pretty sick, I have to say, but, uh, we'll see what happens. Actually, it's kind of a really cute combo with Spray and Prey. Because hmm. I believe it applies on any basic attack, not just your own. Oh, Twitch, they're going to get bubbled up as well. This takes a little bit of harass, but yeah, it looks like they're pushing aggressively here. We'll see, I mean... It's been a while since we've seen Shivana. Nice to see her back here in the LPL, but we'll see what YG can get done here. I mean, they need something here. They would love another win. So we'll see if they can get it done here with a bit of a different Shivana pick here. Looks like Love Cry Boy just going to rotate it down, put a ward down, and Shivana's looking for something here. I think just maybe trying to see what stray camps or what pressure she can apply to lanes. Because as you said, Papa, her ganking is not spectacular. In terms of laning phase, though, I think Young Glory have done really well here in terms of main matchups just because in a 2v2 sense Twitch Sona, as we see lots of damage coming on to Vayne Nami here, Twitch Sona uh, heads up will always be a Vayne Nami lane. Vayne Nami definitely need to get to level 6 to really have the dueling situation here. Ryze is just going to wail away on the melee champion that is Shen and Ari versus Zed is very even so I do think that as the lanes lined up at level 1, Young Glory feeling better about the lane matchups. Yeah, and if you're going to pick a jungler like Shyvana, then your lanes being robust is quite important because mm. you really need to make sure that everything's self-sufficient. So you can just go around and farm and get... I mean, we kind of saw it uh, with OMG, right? With Lovelin playing jungle Yorick, really just finding plenty of room to farm and then by the mid-game it looked very, very scary. Exactly. If there wasn't worries about the enemy pressure, which in that case it was because the Lee Sin was sort of anchored to bot lane, then... Yeah, very farming the jungle. I mean, the, the camps respawn fairly quickly. There's still gold to be had there, so Shyvana is quite happy. Yeah, this is here. He's gonna look to me, but doesn't quite get a cocoon. Actually, gonna come in. Maybe Shyvana can come through there. Zed now looking for it as well, but the damage coming through there. Venomous bite locks down there onto Ari. And that's gonna be a nice first blood there. And Elise, you know, wants to get things started early. Not bad to get first blood there at five and a half minutes. Absolutely not. And starting to see the vindication for that early Elise pick. Always nice to get things going. I mean, really, in a sense, Elise feels like a snowball jungler a lot of the time. Not so much because when she snowballs, it's super scary. It's sort of scary, but the more pressure you add with your ganks, the better things are. And it's almost like playing against the really old jungle Eve, where it got to a point where nobody ever wanted to leave their towers. And look, we, we, we almost all, at least as we see, go that tanky route, right? you know, the spirit of the ancient golem rather than kind of like the spirit of the spectral wraith these days. But if you get the levels early, you know, hitting level 5 on at least before the enemy lane is, or the enemy jungler is massive just because her base damages are so high. So it's one of those cases of if she can get the ganks, she stays ahead in level, she has that amazing ganking threat. 
and then she can just become the tanky frontliner she often uh, transitions into. It's a lot like Lee Sin in a lot of ways, right? We used to yeah. see the DPS Lee Sin's even from the jungle way back when, but they started to learn that it was early aggression, early snowballing into late game peeling, and that's kind of how uh, Elise has gone in terms of her lifetime and competitive. Yep, so top lane here, you can just see trades going back and forth. Spotted at least down the bottom lane there, actually looking to see if uh, Otto would take the bait, but Ryze did not do so. Just kind of playing safely there in his lane. Again, doesn't want to, you know, go too crazy. Just wants to farm, wants to be happy, and once Ryze gets his items, he's a, he's a very happy camper indeed. I mean, so is Shen, and so I think splitting this lane with as much farm as possible is kind of what, you know, we would see if they were both top lane, which, again, is kind of the meta flipped upside down. But right now, I mean, YG, as we said, Really seem to like their lane. They wanted this more. lane matchup based on, and you can see why. 57 CS compared to about the 31 on Vayne is a very big advantage for 7 minutes. Yeah, not to mention the massively, massively push down there as well. That turret's actually, I think, around 50% health up in the top lane, so YG looking good so far, though. EP can certainly start to make some plays again, so again gets cocooned up. As Laupi finds another nice cocoon, but not enough follow-up that time. Would have been good if the Deathmark had come through there for Zeb, but... Couldn't quite make it. Nice poke there from Yanso. Going to find Elise. Does not give vision, I believe, even on the way back. But going to at least kind of say, hey, Elise, you, you know, you can't just gank me for free every time here. I, I know where you are. It's always good to force a jungler to pop a pot or two if they're trying to uh, saunter around your lane and get off a gank. Yeah, Shivana, of course. It's cathartic at the minimum. Yes. <laughs> Shivana now level 6 as well with red buff, so can maybe look to make something happen here. Again, really just happy if she's getting the farm. The pickaxe is the first pick up here from Twitch. It's probably going to be the Infinity Edge Twitch rather than the Blade of the Rune King. So that's interesting to me just because I'd probably go for a Blade of the Rune King just so that I had the, the item um, parity with the Vayne because you have to expect we're going to see Blade of the Rune King Vayne. So maybe that will lead to a mid-game where a Blade of the Ruin King Vayne will be able to duel this Twitch, even with the CS disadvantage. I certainly think that Vayne will out-duel Twitch in that case. You see Domox with a taunt. Can I come through there? Auto actually activates his ultimate, just clearing out the wave, spell vamping up as well, just trying to make sure he wins those trades. Shin, very tanky at this point, though. He's got himself a Ruby Crystal and a Negatron Cloak up, so Domox can pretty much stay in this lane, and for the most part, Otto's going to waste his mana, although... Shen's chugging out pots there, just trying to make sure he stays healthy enough. I mean, Otto's still trading, you know, range versus melee, so it's looking good there. In terms of Julian, absolutely agree. I think Vayne is going to just roll over Twitch if it's IE versus Blade of the Rune King. The thing that I feel is going to happen, if that's YG's plan, is that they're going to group as soon as that Infinity Edge finishes mm. and try and get a really And never have fight. that 1v1 situation. Absolutely, yeah. If you don't get yourself in a thing where you can duel here, his bottom lane repel going to come through as well. Venom is out onto Otto. The damage going to come through. Cocoon is going to look there, but a good juke comes out from Ryze. I think he's going to be able to get out of the way safer here as the top lane. Aqua Prison comes through there with Shivana now in the top lane, looking to pressure it down. You know, they could get an early turret here, break up the landing a little, and that as well would also accelerate Twitch's Infinity Edge and kind of mitigate some of that dueling potential there. And they are going to take out the first turret here. Top turret will fall as Shivana comes in to help there, that one. In there for that one, even. English is hard sometimes. It'll be interesting to see if we have the early spirit visit. Oh, Gashendo there. Bad news for Booping. Sham there as well, and that's a kill there for Sis. Yeah, nice to pick up the kill, and Shyvana gets the kill, so that starts her snowball into getting some team fight items there. Probably going to be the Spirit Visage coming out of Shen, just because with that 20% CDR, the Mammoth early cooldown of Stan United, a little bit more manageable. Huge push there, actually. The T2 goes down very quickly as four members of YG group. The good news there for EPHK, managed to pick up Dragon towards the bottom half of the map there, so they did clean up that objective for themselves. That's going to balance out one of the towers that went down, but of course with two quick towers down here for YG, two in the top is already down, as no turrets have currently been claimed here for EPHK, so kind of an interesting way to accelerate this game here. Sid's going to get caught up by Cocoon, oh goodness, Super Cat. Goodbye, Shivana. Deleted from the map there, pastry time. I guess Young Glory to Cement Deli, they might want to ward down that blue buff just to... Because, I mean, taking down two... Uh, top turrets for them gives them so much control over the enemy blue because they have so many access ways to get to it that's probably the next step now in that trade it could be i can tell you though we actually made a misstep on our guesses for twitch's build it's not an infinity edge that dragon's finished he rushed a last whisper see i saw a pickaxe and a longsword and although i very much know that is the recipe for last whisper this is super surprising I mean, there's not a whole lot of armor at all. And Shen's got a cloth armor. That's about it. And I mean, the theory behind it, I guess, is that Twitch gets free attack speed from Ambush. He gets bonus attack damage from his ultimate. I can see the synergy there in having the early armor pen, but it's not like the enemy team has a Malphite or someone who just really has high natural armor like a Ramus. Like, 
I don't see the need for necessitating a rushed Last Whisper, but that's the way he's gone. Death Mark here, good exhaust there actually from Love Cry by Supercat. Looking in there as well, but now the uh, Venomous Cast going to come out there, slow him down, and Sona will be safe. Actually, didn't take too much damage there, so a timely exhaust from Love Cry Boy. Going to keep him alive. His dragon's going to rotate down towards the bottom lane. I guess to me, what is the situation? Like, what does it look like where Last Whisper is the best purchase at 11 minutes for a Twitch? I mean, right now against this Shen, it actually looks quite good. But I don't think this is going to last. I mean, Shen, you know, it's kind of interesting how the swaps worked out for YG because, you know, obviously he was up against Ryze, so he was like, okay, I'll build his Negatron Cloak, get some health. And now he almost wishes he had a Chain Vest on top of that as well because all of a sudden there's no AP really coming out at all from this bottom lane. It is very nice map movement because now the Spirit Visage is looking like a bad buy. Yeah. And looks like Sizz actually going to go out onto Elise here as well, but there's Vayne in there as well. Sizz, we're going to take a little bit too much damage. Lapi very low there, but it's going to come back in here as well. I think that's a dead Shavana. Repel going to be activated, and Supercat coming through to clean that one out. It's going to look nice here. I, It does not work on turrets, correct? No, uh, armor penetration does not work on turrets. Uh-oh, that's bad news for Yancer as well. Completely caught out though by Aqua Prison, and Supercat's going to claim yet another victim. The tower will go down there in the bottom lane as the creeps will finish that one off as they back off there. There it does. So YG, you know, for all the kills they just gave away, it's three for zero right now in turrets, and they've got themselves about 1,300 gold or so in the lead. But I don't know, man. Rush Last Whisper is very, very interesting. Yeah, by the letter of the current meta, you know, by the letter of kills translating into objectives... Uh, they're going to be very happy to be three turrets up and giving away a few kills for it. But if you ever give too many kills, for example, a Zed here is now 301, it might be the fact that when you get to that team fight, the person is fed enough to make the difference. And that was an incredible crescendo by Low Cry Triple Boy. Triple crescendo. I, Lovely play from Love I Cry Boy. I almost expected explosions to happen. The repel was coming in, and Love Cry Boy knew exactly what to do there. Times that to a T, and Twitch completely walked Scott Free out of that one there. So really nice play there from Love And Cry we always Boy. comment on the whiffed crescendo, so I feel like we should give the same respect to... Not even a flash crescendo, they're just a lovely play. Oh, Super Cat now trapped out as well. Zed could go down here. Deathmark though dodged a little bit of damage. Otto very low there, and that damage from Zed should pop the rise over the top there. And actually... Actually, Supercat picks up that kill, I believe, from Ignite as Elise comes through for a bit of extra damage. Dom Hawk, so in trouble now as well on that Shen. Giovanna going to come through here looking for the dive. Doesn't quite want to go for it, though, as Ari gets stopped in her tracks by that cocoon. So, Young Glory still trying to make some moves here. They've got the three towers down. They've got plenty of room around the map to move here, but the kills are definitely an EPHK side, and the game is very, very close here. Less than a thousand gold between these two teams now. Blue the, yeah, exactly. The kills are raining down for EP, but the objectives on the map our goals are, oh, as we do see the smite back, though, to stop the blue from being the result of that trade. That was nice from the LP. Just a very clean smite there. Make sure we get that one. Down the bottom, the push continues here. Sona Twitch looking to get that one done, too, in mid now as well for YG. But as you said, you know, the one person that has benefited from all these kills is Zed. He's got his Blade of the Ruin King already, so he's ready with, to go. With the, uh, the Brutalizer, though, based on he's massive for 14 minutes. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is what we see. We see Brutalizer into Blade of the Ruin King almost every time we've seen Zed, I believe, in the LPL so far. And right now, it's very, very hard for anyone to duel him. And Exactly. Ryze, like, was walking towards top, and he's like, maybe I'll just get these wraiths. Yeah, he's uh, almost got his Rod of Ages, it seems like. He's got his tier ticking away as well, and that is his first item. So, you know, Otto's not doing too bad on items, but it is not anything at all compared to that Brutalizer. He cannot enter the lane against uh, the Zed whatsoever. No, and one of the nice little extensions of the Split Push here is that, you know, they have a Shen as well, which is also another one. Another champion, sorry, who's very well known for his Split Push behavior. Obviously, you know, needs to get some items here. Domhawk's had a little bit of trouble uh, in his lane there, just, you know, kind of having to itemize against this Rise. It was, wasn't a great matchup, and then like, being swapped into, you know, 2v1 now with a Twitch who has a Last Whisper, because hey, why not? Rico, though, by the way, is the next purchase here for Dragon. He is cooking up something spicy. I can tell you what's coming. This feels like it's going to be a Maple Street special. It looks like we're going to see the Sword Divine coming out from Twitch. Oh my. That is quite a lot of damage. I... Personally, I almost hope it's Rune and Hurricane, but I don't think it's going to be. I think Sword of the Divine is, is correct. And so. everyone has these pocket bills that, you know, move away from the norm. They aren't the Infinity Edge Last Whisper, but they aren't the Rub Bay Rune King Rush. I just try and reason out where they're effective. I and mean, you could say, when that item is completed, the first team fight where the bonus attack damage from Spray and Prey crits in an AoE, it could look wonderful. Yep. for Dragon, but they need to get to that item threshold first. Especially with Last Whisper getting all their armor down yep. as well. So, I mean, you know, the theory is there. Let's see if Dragon can put it into practice once he gets there. And, of course, with now, lots of movement now for EPHK. This is a very early group for both these teams, actually. So, all of a sudden, you know, EPHK know they need turrets. YG need to continue the pressure there as well. 
It's kind of you. Why know, he's getting a mid turret here, pastry time. They're gonna push down that one in there. There goes the mid turret. They're gonna probably get the tier two as well. YG quickly back in there after getting their outer turret, but this is not the trade that YG really wanted here. And they are, AP, sorry, wanted. Sorry, you are correct. No, not at all what they wanted. I mean, Shen's gonna stay down the bottom. He's got his ultimate, so he can keep pressuring. But YG all of a sudden just completely opening up the push there, and Dragon's actually being attempted now as well. I don't know if this is the play that EP want to make. They're holding off way too long. They're actually going to lose their middle inhibitor turret. The dragon goes down, but they lose this inhibitor as well. It's going to be a huge misstep here for EP. And why do they are going to get it here? And just too much pushing too fast here. The tidal wave, just a formality there. Sand United plus Zed coming in. They're almost going to save it. The death mark coming through as well. But there's one auto from Otto to clean it out. Domhawks comes through as well. He's going to get cleaned out here. And a huge misstep here is EPHK going to get cleaned off the map here. At least trying to get some work done. A good flash there out from Yen, sir. The damage still coming through. Twitch finally goes down there. But Vayne's going to get popped in there as well as Ryze picks up a double. In fact, that's the triple as Vayne goes down in there. And I don't know what the thought process was. I guess they were like, we need to find some objectives somewhere. But that was too much to throw away there for MPHK. A great charm in there as well on Talal P. He r repels out of the way. So at least we'll be safe for now. But that was not what they scripted when they went for that bottom push. And I, I can comment on that once the action starts to die down. Because we do have short death timers here. Now we see YG back away. That was an interesting situation. And you might look and say, EPHK, they're the bottom team. They just made a mistake. They, they swapped Dragon for... Two inhibitors, what a dumb play. And I can understand where that's coming from. But the thought process there is how often have you seen a team trade uh, mid turret for their bottom turret, for example, and then if you have the benefit of the spectator client, see that they don't have ward coverage, so they back away from taking a second turret, even though with the extra knowledge you know it's free, right? You know that, that they, they wouldn't have been able to react to it. In that case, however... YG had aggressive wards towards the dragon and the entrances, and they had complete knowledge over what EPHK were doing. So they actually had that confidence to be able to keep pushing. So the vision advantage there, there's two wards on the map, actually bought them that huge strategic advantage there. It should have been one of those even trades, but the couple of wards, the 150 gold investment, Got them much, much more than that. Knowledge is certainly power, and YG used that knowledge to great effect there. A huge loss there for EPHK. I mean, the funny thing is, the gold lead still looks completely fine here at this point. You know, there's 2,000 gold between these two teams, but those two inhibitors mean way, way more than that. Exactly. The gold control. tells you a tale that's far, far from the truth. And right now, I mean, EP, they, they have to be thinking about Baron. They've got to be thinking about just waves pushing but they, they endlessly. They can't your time, because the reality is at 18 minutes... To have two inhibitors down, you need your whole five members to be able to clear out two waves of super creeps. There's no chance of being able to leave a base at 18 minutes with against two super wave minions waves. And uh, bottom tower probably going to look pretty delicious here as well. I mean, right now YG they've got themselves in a position where they can do anything they want on this map. It's just a matter of what do they want to do next. And it looks like the answer is take out the tier two and bottom lane because hey, why not? It's pretty free at this point. These minions are just absurdly strong for the time in the game, pastry time. I mean, EPHK are struggling with five-man focus fire to get down these super creeps. And of course, the other waves are stronger as a result of having inhibitors down. So, I mean, this is effectively about a 7 or an 8 v5, pastry time. <laughs> Looks like Tidal Wave going to come through a good taunt actually out from Domox as well. Yenser, those are taking damage. A good crescendo there from Love Cryboy Dragon trying to do damage as well as so like kite back and pick up Shen. A Zonia's there from Yenser. Also buy some time for his team to come back through, but will probably go down here as the damage comes through there. Kane's going to pick up that one onto Ari, but Dragon's still alive here. He's throwing out the damage, doing what he can. Love Cryboy's kiting around as Supercat's going to go down in there as well. And really a 2 for 2 trade. That's normally fine, but YG, of course, with all those minions streaming into the base, the last thing EPHK need is to have themselves waste time trying to fight them here. And you know, as I said, two for two, totally fine in most situations, but YG are going to continue their pressure here, and there's not a whole lot that... I mean, five members wasn't enough to hold off the push before. I doubt the two that are currently alive, or the three, sorry, is going to be nearly enough here, and YG are going to claim yet another turret in the bottom lane. I'm skeptical there's ever been a more one-sided 3k gold lead game in the history of League of Legends. I'd, I would agree with that statement, I think. I mean, YG here probably going to have to back off from this last inhibitor, which... I'm sure they're unhappy about, but there's a red buff here to steal if, they, steal if they want it. I mean, again, they can basically waltz over to Baron whenever they want to. There's a ludicrous amount of super minions hitting onto these Nexus turrets. There are indeed. I mean, just to kind of put it in perspective, Thane doesn't have her Blade of the Ruined King yet, and she has to try and kill super minions. <laughs> she doesn't have an item. I mean, she's even spent, you know, over a thousand gold on boots at this point. Yep, Home Guard there as well, just to try and make the counter push happen. Oh my goodness, the Nexus turret's gone. 
And the other one's almost gone now, so thankfully this game it will regenerate. This game escalated so quickly from one decision that will look appalling from the EP side, but two wards just won on the tie of this game. They were just able to be confident about, hey, let's take a second turret, hey, let's take an inhibitor, when 99 times out of 100, that trade wouldn't have happened just because it would have been too risky to keep pushing. And apparently Dragon can hear me from the past, because here's a Runin's Hurricane. Sure. I like it. I, I don't know if it's good. I don't know if he would have built it if this game looks different, but... It's very eccentric. It is indeed, and I'm excited. I mean, I mean the LPL, I mean, when it comes to items, it feels like all items are on the table. Sword of the Occult? Sure. <laughs> Runin's Hurricane? Why not? It's true. In our opening game for day one here in this week, we did see a Sword of the Occult. That was a good one. And I must say, when I play League of Legends, I also feel like buying a Hurricane, just because that little ball of yellow looks awesome. It does look get, very sweet. The, the buff for it. Yep, they can see they're on Dragon. He does have Runa Tarkan. I mean, I get it on someone like Twitch. Let's not justify too much, basically, time. Okay. At some point, I feel like people overreach too much in justifying items. This is shenanigans. Maybe. Again, it'll be it'll be really interesting to know here as Yance is going to go in there. Good Cocoon, actually. The tidal wave, they're almost going to be enough. In fact, Wilby is booping flashes, but there's the counter flash coming out from Ari. Wants to pick up the kill and does here. Does have Zonyas, I think, as Zed. Wanted to get in there, but didn't decide to swap over. Could have got in, maybe deathmarked that Ari and tried to get a kill, but I think realized that Ari with the Zonia's cooldown ready wasn't going to do too well here. And this inhibitor is going to fall yet again here in the top lane. Middle inhibitor is back up as well. So EPHA going to have a chance to defend that. There's a taunt coming through. They really have to try and make something happen. They'll find Lauer activated for Vayne. Sees over the top there in Dragon's Descent. Going to try and do some damage. And actually move uh, move Vayne out of the area of that fight as well. And again, just some nice kiting there. Domhawks in the back gets picked off in there as well. Inhibitor's going to go down there. Rune pissing up on Kane's going to get him killed. And now Lauer going to go down as well. I think Young Glory going to do it once more here. Shut out EPHK out of there out of their first win here in the LPL. And you know what? They've got some inhibitors left, but they don't need to take them out anymore. The Nexus is now ready and open, and that's going to be it. A very interesting game between these two. But one little butterfly and a complete rollover there for YG in the last 10 minutes or so of that game. That was crazy. I don't think we'll ever see a game again quite like that, Pastry Time. I'm trying to see what we get out of it apart from the power of wards and that Shyvana with the rework in a team fight seems pretty... Pretty strong, you know, was able to go Spirit of the Ancient Golem and still be a very relevant damage threat with that burnout ticking. But GG well played. Two wins on the board now for Young Glory. They're still searching for a win over anyone other than the bottom place. But yes, firmly entrenched at the bottom. 0-8, our energy pacemaker, HK. So almost done here with week three, week three, day two coverage. Excuse me, of course, if you'd like, if you missed any of the games or like to rewatch them again, feel free to head over to youtube.com slash lolchamp series. We can catch the coverage here of the LBL. We'll be back with the last game here for the Tencent LPL Summer, and it's a doozy. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but uh, I think you guys will know who. I think you guys will know the teams.